Hello, welcome to part 16 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 76th question. A patient who is 8 months pregnant has abdominal diastasis recti with a separation of 1.5 inch or 4 cm. Which of the following exercise would be most appropriate initial exercise for abdominal strengthening in a supine position? Option A. Trunk holds. Option B. Hook lying head lifts. Option C. Pelvic tilt leg sliding. Option D. Bilateral leg lowering. And the answer is Option B. Hook lying head lifts. Explanation to this question is Trunk holds are contraindicated for a patient with diastasis recti. Supine hook lying head lifts emphasizes the rectus abdominis muscle and are least likely to increase the separation of diastasis recti. Pelvic tilt leg sliding is more advanced than the head lifts. Bilateral leg lowering is an advanced abdominal strengthening exercise that causes excessive low back strain and should not be performed during pregnancy. Moving to our 77th question. The mechanism of recovery after a stroke comes in two stages. The first stage of recovery occurs within the first three to six months. Second stage occurs after this time period. Which of the following changes are expected within the first three to six months after a stroke? Option A. Development of new sympathetic connections. Option B. Neuronal network changes. Option C. Recovery of partially injured neurons. Option D. E, exposure of previously latent functional pathway. And the answer is Option C. Recovery of partially injured neurons. Explanation to this question is Recovery of partially damaged ischemic neurons occurs within the first 3 to 6 months after a stroke. Resolution of local edema, agglutination of local circulation and the destruction of local toxins are expected within the first 6 months of the stroke. Second stage of recovery involves neuroplasticity which includes changes of structural and functional neurons organization. Now let's move to our 78th question. A 55-year-old patient is referred to physical therapy from the emergency room following a placement of long leg cast. The patient sustained a right femur fracture when hit by a car while bike riding. The patient is nauseous but has good balance during initial attempts of non-weight bearing gait training on the right lower extremity. The patient lives alone in an apartment on the second floor. Which of the following is the most appropriate assistive device for this patient? Option A. Standard worker. Option B. Axillary crutches. Option C. Cord cane. Option D. Two straight canes. And the answer is... Option B. Axillary crutches. Explanation to this question is, a standard walker on the stairs is not as safe as crutches. As the patient was previously active, has stair at home and must be non-weight bearing on one lower extremity, axillary crutches would provide the greater safety margin and independence. The cord cane would not be sufficient since the patient is non-weight bearing on the lower extremity. The patient would not be able to not weight bearing on one lower extremity with two straight canes. Now let's move to our 79th question. A distant runner has a transient episode of complete motor paralysis with minimal sensory involvement in the left lower extremity. The patient history includes a recent compartment syndrome injury which is believed to be strongly associated with patient symptoms at consult. The patient's acute nerve injury is most likely caused by which of the following mechanism? Option A. Mechanical injury. Option B. Stretch injury. Option C. Crush and percussion injury. Option D. Penetrating trauma. And the answer is Option C. Crush and percussion injury. Explanation to this question is Compartment syndrome is a crush and percussion injury. Compartment syndrome injuries cause increased pressure in the surrounding tissue. This pressure compresses the supply of arterial blood of the nerve, increasing the nerve's risk of ischemic cell damage. An example of mechanical injury is tourniquet paralysis. Stretch injuries may be caused by severe blow to nerve and traction. An example of penetrating trauma is stab wound laceration. Now let's move to our 80th question. 
you are treating a patient in a neuro intensive care unit the patient is unresponsive to stimulus and you determine he is comatose you observe the following posture at patient's bedside supine the lower extremity is plantar flex and internally rotated and upper extremity are positioned in shoulder adduction elbow flexion and wrist flexion which of the following best describes the posture you observe in this patient option a hemiplegia option b decorticate rigidity option c decerebrate rigidity option d spasticity extensor and the answer is option c decorticate rigidity explanation to this question is a patient in supine position with lower extremity plantar flexed and internally rotator and upper extremity positioned in shoulder adduction elbow flexion and wrist flexion would be best described as exhibiting posture of decorticate rigidity hemiplegia would be characterized by posture that is paralyzed on one side of the body decerebrate rigidity is a posture of lower extremity positioned in shoulder adduction elbow extension forearm pronation and wrist flexion spasticity extensor does not exist so that's all for today if you need further clarification check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box if you like this mcq session do subscribe to this channel for more videos thank you